Good evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to this prayer at the close of the day. Whew. We we're having some serious technical difficulties, but I think we're going to get through. Make the video might drop out a little bit. I don't think there's much I can do about that right now. We're going to continue to investigate. But anyway, sorry for being so late, but I didn't want to uh, shortchange this tonight. It is the Word of God after all. So anyway, I do pray this finds you well. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. And I'm going to once again turn to the daily lectionary, and I'm going to read to you from 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 through 16, which is the fourth chapter in its entirety. Now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times some will depart from the faith by devoting themselves to deceitful spirits and teachings of demons, through the insincerity of liars, whose consciences are seared, who forbid marriage and require abstinence from foods that God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. For everything created by God is good, and nothing's to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving, for it is made holy by the word of God and prayer. If you put these things before the brothers, you will be a good servant of Christ Jesus, being trained in the words of the faith and of the good doctrine that you have followed. Have nothing to do with irreverent, silly myths. Rather, train yourself for godliness. For while bodily training is of some value, godliness is of value in every way, as it holds promises for the present life and also for the life to come. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance. For to this end we toil and strive, because we have our hope set on the living God, who is the Savior of all people, especially those who believe. Command and teach these things. Let no one despise you for your youth, but set the believers an example in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, in purity. Until I come, devote yourself to the public reading of Scripture, the exhortation, to teaching. Do not neglect the gift that you have, which was given you by the prophecy when the council of elders laid their hands on you. Practice these things. Immerse yourself in them, so that all may see your progress. Keep a close watch on yourself and on the teaching. Persist in this, for by so doing you will save both yourself and your hearers. And this is the word of the Lord. So we see this theme run through this chapter, really runs through all of Scripture, but uh, and certainly this whole letter, but to teach in purity. That's the pastor's job. His job isn't to teach you what you want to hear. His job isn't to teach what's popular socially or, or culturally. His job is to teach you the truth. And sometimes that truth comes with great pain, persecutions. You can think about people that, as I speak, are being persecuted for the faith and will not, let me repeat that, will not, will not hesitate to proclaim the truth, even as they face an imminent death. Keep watch on ourselves, pastors must, on our teaching. It means I study, I read, can't give you what I don't have, and ultimately when I stand before you and do what Timothy was called to do, to exhort, to read scripture, to teach, you know, to give you the word of Christ, that I would do so faithfully. You can pray this for your pastors, uh, there's a time of great turmoil in the American church. Uh, it saddens pastors at times because we have people that uh, you know, are raised by our best efforts in the faith and told the truth. And then when circumstances in life occur uh, that would make the proclamation or the clinging to that truth maybe even personally uncomfortable, usually we're not physically persecuted, but you know, re relationships are going to be destroyed, friendships are going to be destroyed, that happens. That happens. We are more than likely, you know, to fudge, to say, okay, no. I mean, we see that over and over again as pastors, and you do too, as church people, as people who go to church, that people do find for themselves teachers who will tell them what they want to hear, do find for themselves um, things that will make them comfortable and allow them to do what they want to do and believe what they want to believe without really challenging them. But ultimately, you know, as much as that gives me a heavy heart, and boy, it sure does. It sure does. My job is to teach you the truth in all its purity, 
the hard things, the joyful things, you know, the great news of Jesus Christ, um, and you know what we are as God's people, what we're called to be. These things can be very difficult, but still, this is where life is, and not just the little life, but the life to come as well. This is what God's people do, and this is what your pastors do. These are the pastoral epistles, so you're going to see that theme a lot. Paul's charge to Timothy to be faithful, and that's your prayer for your pastor, that he would be faithful. All right, let's confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we pray your blessing upon your people that we would be strengthened in these dark and latter days to boldly proclaim the truth, both in word and deed, that we as pastors would cling to your word and by your grace and by your spirit faithfully proclaim that word to a world that so desperately needs to hear it. Bless the hearers of that word, that they may take it to heart and take it into their communities and the various vocations to which you call them, that they may proclaim Christ again in word and deed. Heavenly Father, as always, we ask you to be with those who are crying out to you due to life circumstances, due to illness. Um, and we ask you to hear our prayers on their behalf for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ. We pray for Allison, for Deb, for John, and, and for Bonnie, and, and for Justin, and for Tony, and for Steve, and for Megan. These are all friends of the congregation. And, and we, pray, we pray for... Uh, Jason as well, dear friend of the congregation, and Len and Dennis, we ask you to place your hand upon them. They are our dear brothers in Christ. We ask you to place your hand upon all these people and according to your gracious will, heal them. Be with the nurses and doctors that care for them, that they might be your instruments for their well-being. Bless their families as they remain at their side and in all things. Keep them and all of us firmly in the faith you have given to us, keeping us ever mindful of of Christ's victory, which is our victory by virtue of our baptism over death itself. All this we ask in the precious name of Jesus, who lives and reigns with you on the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Visit our dwellings, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And I'm going to sing a little bit. and I have no idea uh, how well this is being communicated to any of you. Uh, I'm just watching my indicator here and it does seem like the video is dropping out. Hopefully the audio is... Solid. And again, this will be on YouTube. It'll be on the church's, uh, on my Facebook page and available through the church's webpage. And the entire thing should be there on YouTube. So this is a little bit of 646 Church of God, Elect and Glorious. Church of God, elect and glorious, holy nation, chosen race, called as God's own. Special people, 
royal priest and heirs of grace. Know the purpose of your calling. Show to all his mighty deeds. Tell of love that knows no limits. Grace that meets all human needs. That stands a one of four of hymn number 646, Church of God, Elect and Glorious. With that, my brothers and sisters, I bid you a blessed evening, peaceful evening, and by God's grace, we'll see you tomorrow night. Good night.